Because new research out this morning from the consumer group, which suggests that hot drinks that we got from uh, uh, some high street chains contain six times more caffeine than others. I really hope you're listening to this, John Cope, because <laughs> you're a copy monster. Costa offers the strongest medium cappuccino, containing 325 milligrams of caffeine, which is the same as around four cups of tea. But if you get the same thing from Starbucks, you're getting five times less caffeine. They offer the weakest cappuccino, just 66 milligrams of caffeine. That's less than the 75 milligrams that you'd find in a typical tea bag. The amount of caffeine found in coffee from Greg's and pret manger were also significantly less than Costa. For comparison, a 250 ml can of popular energy drink, the popular energy drink, Red Bull, contains 80 milligrams of caffeine. So how much is healthy? How much we should we be drinking? And Look, how do you know what's in I mean, them? You've got a pint of coffee there. I guess I've got the shakes. Right. <laughs> you've got that as well. <laughs> We're joined now by specialist dietitian Nicola Ludlam Rain. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, I'm staggered by this because you don't really know what you're buying, do you? You might know about the calories, you don't know about the coffee content. Yeah, I, I personally was quite shocked, but I wanted to start with a bit of good news because research shows that coffee drinkers do tend to be healthier than non-coffee drinkers. Told really? you, Sally. Why? Told you. And I mean, I love coffee, but what, why? Um, because well, coffee is a plant food, it does contain some fibre and it does actually have some positive roles. So caffeine helps to improve alertness, attention. Um, so it's not all bad, it's just the moderation. Especially if you have coffee half an hour before exercise, it can actually boost performance as well. OK, so do we need to be a little bit careful about then if you're buying from a particular branded store, knowing that that's going to be stronger and therefore have an impact, what will that impact be on you? What yeah. are the effects? 100%. So caffeine affects everybody differently. But what we know is that you really should be having less than about three to 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. And some of these popular high street shops are selling over 300 milligrams in just one coffee. So you can really easily overdo it. And what we know is that if you have too much caffeine, you can experience anxiety, the jitters, stomach upset, and also insomnia. So problem sleeping and sleep is crucial for health. John, I've got to intervene here. You've got to say, how many coffees do I you have? I need an intervention. You do. How many coffees do you think you have of a morning here on the telly? I think this is my fifth mug yeah. this morning so but the thing is I how I mean, strong is that well, so how thing, many milligrams i can handle it Sal. i can handle it <laughs> but you know it, it, it depends on how strong it is and maybe this is just weak coffee yeah so in about an instant mug there's about 100 milligrams so you might only slightly be overdoing it so my advice would be to maybe alternate between caffeinated and decaf and actually if you want to feel alert on a morning i'm sure most of your viewers are sipping their morning coffee as we're recording if you wake up, you get a boost of cortisol, so that makes us feel alert, and caffeine does the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what they say is don't have the two together. Have your morning coffee about an hour after waking, just as your natural cortisol levels are decreasing, and then you get a boost and the coffee can work its magic, rather than having a double whammy and then feeling more tired once the caffeine's worn off. Right. Do you think people need more information then about how much caffeine is in a particular drink in a that they're going to buy if they're going into a coffee chain um should you be aware say if it's 300 like and something, something labeling yeah. yeah yeah i was thinking about this yesterday and i think that if a cup of coffee contains over 150 200 milligrams then really you should have a little warning just like with calories now we're seeing it it wouldn't be hard for these big chains just to put a little caffeine alert symbol especially if you're pregnant or breastfeeding you should actually be having less than 200 milligrams so that would be really easy to overdo it without realizing so my advice would be to ask for one shot or go for decaf if you're ordering out very quickly what should john be doing should he still be having five coffees a morning drop it down to four and make no. sure no. <laughs> you see actually the, the strange thing about this is if you have less coffee yeah i feel terrible you feel terrible yeah, yeah I mean, it feels I, great. I, and i don't i think i've gone so far with coffee that i can't eat i'm feeling guilty now that i can't you know <laughs> i think i think i would i'd probably sleep less and feel worse if i didn't have it so if you cut down on caffeine really quickly it can cause headaches mm. so cut down gradually and just make sure that your last cup of coffee is around eight hours before you go to bed yeah good okay. point Thank you very much indeed for ruining my day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you.